Cities are almost always on some kind of body of water, and sometimes there isn't a bridge that gets you where you want to go, or sometimes you just want a cheap ride out on the water with great scenery. Either way, the 10 North American cities with the highest ferry ridership are coming your way. This is City Nerd, weekly content on cities and transportation. Viewer suggestions, always appreciated, and this is one that just kept coming up. Ferry terminals that double as public markets, Ferries to football stadiums, ferries to baseball stadiums. How about a video on ferries? Okay, people, I get the point. And really, what's not to love? Ferries are beautiful, and they just have like a completely different rhythm of travel compared to other transportation modes. They have long dwell times for boarding and alighting, but they're smooth point-to-point -point rides. They're usually super spacious. You get great views. They generally don't get stuck in traffic and they support a car-free or car light existence if that's what you're after. But before we get into this, let's acknowledge a couple downsides. A ferry terminal has the same issue that a beach train station does. By virtue of being right on the water, you're cutting off half the walk shed you'd want for transit or ferry-oriented development or whatever you want to call it. Also, if it's the type of ferry that carries motor vehicles, then you're going to have a big queuing area, which is going to kill even more of your walk shed. All that said, though, I'm still pretty much a ferry nerd. So here's a list of 10 cities, and what you're going to see is the way they're ranked is by total trips for all services and routes that have at least one end in a metro area. So for the US, this is very straightforward. I pulled data from the National Transit Database for 2019, so it's pre-pandemic, but I wanted to include Canada and Mexico this time. So, well, I did, but we'll talk about the data sources or lack thereof when we get to those places on the list. And just one caveat, this is about public transit. So things like, say, the little water taxis at Disney World don't count. What's on this list are services that people use in their everyday lives. Enough preamble? Yeah, let's get into it. Number 10 is New Orleans. These are ferries running across the Mississippi River. You've got two agencies running two routes each. The New Orleans Regional Transit Authority, which accounts for a little over half the ridership on two routes, and the Plaquemines Parish Government, which also runs two routes and covers the rest of the trips. The most famous of these crossings is at Canal Street, where you've got a streetcar stop on the downtown side, and the ferry takes you over to the Algiers Point neighborhood. Number nine is Boston, where all the routes are run by the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority. The hub is downtown at Long Wharf and Rose Wharf, and you can get ferries over to the airport, down south to Hingham Bay, well, Clearly, I don't know how to pronounce place names in Massachusetts, so let's just call it Charlestown. Number eight is a city I've been itching to feature on this channel, and it's San Juan, Puerto Rico. All the ferry services come through the Puerto Rico Maritime Transport Authority. You've got a couple different things going on here. In central San Juan, you've got the Aqua Expresso, which is a water taxi that runs across San Juan Bay, docking at Catano, Old San Juan, which is kind of like a tourist haven, and Hato Rey, which is like San Juan's central business district. And at Hato Rey, you've got a connection to the train Urbano. Then out east, you've got ferries running to the islands of Vieck and Calabria. These ran out of Fayardo for a long time, but in researching this video, I found they ran out of Ciba now. People who are up on this stuff, let me know what the reasoning is here. Anyway, this is a pretty loose definition of the San Juan metro area, but the NTD does assign all this to San Juan, so that's what I'm going with. In any case, the islands are incredible. Playa Flamenco on Calabria shows up pretty routinely on lists of like the top 10 beaches worldwide, and it's entirely justifiable. For number seven, let's make our very first trip to the Maritimes on this channel. It's Halifax, Nova Scotia. Halifax Transit runs two routes out of the downtown ferry terminal, one to Alderney Landing in downtown Dartmouth, and one to Woodside. 
And lucky for me, Halifax Transit publishes this really nice quarterly performance measures report where I can pretty easily find all the ridership numbers, which, well, I just can't say the same for all Canadian public agencies. Number six, let's go back to Massachusetts. This is the booming metropolis of Barnstable Town? Barnstable County? Whatever it is, it's essentially Cape Cod, and it's apparently its own urbanized area apart from Boston or Providence slash Fall River slash New Bedford. The agency is the Woods Hole, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket Steamship Authority. And the service is ferries running out of Woods Hole and Hyannis to Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. Number five is the San Francisco Bay Area. The main terminal here is at the ferry building. Big shock, I know. And you've got two agencies running services. The San Francisco Bay Ferry accounts for about 60% of the trips, and it serves connections between San Francisco and East Bay. The other agency is the Golden Gate Bridge, Highway, and Transportation District with connections to Marin County to the north. Transportation and land use in the Bay Area are super constrained and super interesting, so let's do a quick flyover of a few of the terminals. The Bay Bridge and BART tend to be maxed out at peak hours, so this ferry out of Jack London Square can be a pretty viable option depending where you live in Oakland. The terminals in Marin County are interesting. The one at Tiburon is really picturesque, but then you've got this one at Larkspur, and I don't know, maybe I'm a bit out there on this, but I'm just not sure these are my favorite transit adjacent land uses. And in San Francisco, you've got a terminal at Oracle Park, which serves both Marin and East Bay. I'll probably come back to Oracle Park in a video in the near future. Number four is Cancun, which you might just think of as a string of all-inclusive resorts on a beach or the place where Ted Cruz goes when the Texas power grid collapses. But Cancun is actually around a million in the metro area. And I don't know if Playa del Carmen is actually part of that metro area, but it feels roughly correct, and it is my channel, so I'm rolling them together. Otherwise, both cities would make this list anyway. Ferries are overseen by the Port Administration of the state of Quintana Roo, which, by the way, has a data portal that puts most U.S and Canadian transit agencies to shame. It took me like five seconds to Google this, despite the fact that it's in Spanish and it converts Isla Mujeres to Women Island, which honestly feels a bit creepy. Anyway, there's a ferry out of Cancun to Isla Mujeres, a place where the golf cart appears to be king. That one carried about 5.5 million passengers in 2019. And then you've got a ferry to the island of Cozumel, from Playa del Carmen, and that carried about 4.4 million passengers. Number three is Seattle, and you'll see there was kind of a big gap between number four and number three on this list. And if you look at how the Seattle metro area is laid out, it's not really a surprise. There are three agencies running ferry services, but the vast majority of it is Washington State Ferries, which runs routes across Puget Sound to locations where there's no overland option at all, like Vashon Island, or where the nearest overland connection is way, way out of direction. The main terminal is Coleman Dock in downtown Seattle. It's really a construction zone right now since they took out the viaduct and started building an arterial street. So these are old street views. Coleman Dock serves travelers to Bremerton and Bainbridge Island, and I believe Seattle Bainbridge is the highest ridership route. Your other providers are King County Metro, which runs the West Seattle Water Taxi and the Vashon Water Taxi, out of Pier 50, right next to the Coleman Dock, and Pierce County, which runs ferries out of Stillicum in the southern part of Puget Sound, mostly over to Anderson Island. All right, before we get into honorable mention, and the top two. As usual, quick reminder to give this video a like, unless you're like some kind of monster who doesn't like fairies. Also, let's check in on the subscriber count, which I'm comparing to famous sports venues, partly because I want you all to get a feel for the scale of community we're building here around transportation and livability and urbanism. But if we're being real, mostly to gratify my incredibly fragile ego. Anyway, this week we have enough subscribers to fill the mecca of basketball itself, Madison Square Garden. So consider subscribing if you haven't already, and we'll take a look next week and see which venue we can fill. So first, 
dishonorable mention to Canada for just, I don't know, making it really hard to find data. Shouldn't every country have a national transit database? Or maybe it does exist, and this is just a dishonorable mention for me personally because I couldn't find it. Canadians, let me know if there's something I'm missing here. And on that note, honorable mention to Toronto, which probably belongs somewhere in the top 10, but I just can't figure out where. Wikipedia says, Toronto Island Ferries carries about 75,000 passengers a day. There's no citation on this, which if I just multiplied it by 365 days, I'd get like 27 million a year, which would put it ahead of Seattle on this list. But then if you go to the actual city website, it says Toronto Island Ferries carry about 1.4 million a year. And then there's that ferry to Billy Bishop City Airport. Billy Bishop serves something like 2.8 million air travelers a year, but it looks like Something like 90% of people accessing the airport use the pedestrian tunnel and not the ferry. I don't know, it doesn't really add up. Might be around 2 million, and that would put it in the top 10. Again, I just don't know where. Anyway, if someone has a better handle on this, let me know down in the comments. But in the meantime, maybe the city of Toronto should look at contracting out their data management to the government of the state of Quintana Roo. And before we get to number two, I'll just tell you the next five on the list in the misguided hope that it'll prevent people from asking where City X was in the rankings. 11 is Portland, Maine. 12 is Bremerton, Washington, which you'd think would be part of Seattle Metro, but apparently isn't. 13 is Savannah, Georgia. 14 is Jacksonville, Florida. And 15 is essentially the Chicago water taxi. Okay, number two is Vancouver, Canada, which has two agencies running ferry services. BC Ferries accounts for about 21 million trips. Most of the ridership is out of the Sawasan Terminal, with the majority of ridership going to Swartz Bay, which is in the greater Victoria area. I didn't count Victoria as a separate metro, even though it probably is, just because I didn't want to talk about the same surfaces twice. North of Vancouver, you've also got several ferries running out of Horseshoe Bay, and those get you to Nanaimo, also on Vancouver Island, and a couple other destinations. The other carrier is Vancouver's transit agency, TransLink, which runs the sea bus between Waterfront Station in downtown Vancouver, and Lonsdale Key in North Vancouver. Seabus has a great connection to SkyTrain and it carries a little over 6 million passengers a year. And number one shouldn't be a surprise, it's New York. The Staten Island Ferry alone carries about 25 million passengers a year. So that is easily the highest ridership ferry line in North America. But then you've got the New York Waterway, which mostly serves trips across the Hudson between New Jersey and Manhattan. And it connects at Midtown Battery Park City and Pier 11 Wall Street. That's about 9 million trips. Then you've got the New York City Ferry, which runs several routes, mostly along the East River connecting Manhattan, Queens, and Brooklyn, including Roosevelt Island and Governor's Island. But it does have lines that serve the Bronx, Staten Island, and the west side of Manhattan. New York City Ferry carries about 6 million trips. And finally, you've got something like 100,000 trips that Metro North runs on the Haverstraw, Ossining, and Newburgh Beacon ferries, which both connect to the Metro North Hudson line. New Yorkers, let me know if I covered everything here. There's just a lot going on. And yeah, nothing I just mentioned matches that outdated map back there. Okay, that one was tough to research and I'm honestly not 100% sure I caught everything. So if you can think of anything you think I missed, let me know down in the comments. And as always, thanks for joining. I'll be back with a new topic next week and I'll see you then.